first off, that <coughs> sound you hear in the background is a bunch of screaming cicadas I hired. So that's gonna be going in the background for most of this video. So today we're gonna be talking about what crawl ratio is. And we're gonna be talking about when people say high gearing and they mean a low gear ratio and kind of clear up some of the confusion on the weird high low words. A gear ratio is just a relationship of inputs and outputs of two gears. So if we had a smaller input and a larger output, that would mean it would take multiple revolutions of the input to get the output to revolve once. And that's actually their gear ratio. If it's small to big, that would be a gear reduction or a speed reduction, but a torque multiplication, like a longer lever. But if the output gear was smaller than the input gear, then that would be a speed multiplication or an overdrive ratio, like using a really small wrench but you can go more quickly around whatever you're unscrewing. You wouldn't have very much leverage, there would be no torque multiplication, but you would get more speed out of it, meaning that less than one input would create more than one output as far as revolutions. When people say low gearing, they actually mean a numerically high gear ratio, or that there's a lot of inputs for one output between two gears. But when they say high gearing, they actually mean a numerically low gear ratio or maybe even an overdrive ratio, meaning that not very much turning of the input creates a good amount or a lot of output. Crawl ratio is the maximum number of inputs your engine can make into the drivetrain before the wheels have to spin once. Now you could technically just measure your engine's RPM and then your wheel's RPM and you could find the ratio there. But if we wanted to break it down to each drivetrain component, here's what we would do. Well, we have a certain number of inputs coming from the engine. And if you have an automatic transmission, then you would have to account for the possible gear reduction in the torque converter, which is basically these two fans and some fluid between them and a lot of cool technology that allows for a certain amount of gear reduction before it has to connect your engine to your drivetrain and it basically will stall out if you go past that point. That point is called the stall ratio of a torque converter, the most gear reduction it can provide. Now, after the torque converter, we go to the transmission and I would select first gear if I wanted the lowest gearing or highest gear ratio. I had to select first gear in my transmission for our calculations because even though reverse is actually lower gearing in my transmission, you're not allowed to use a reverse gear in your calculations for crawl ratio because you're not really gonna be rock crawling backward, you're gonna be rock crawling forward. Now, after the transmission, because my truck is a four wheel drive, I have a transfer case and because it's a real transfer case, it has a low range. Some of the new stuff doesn't even have a low range and it makes me wanna scream. So that low range is just another gear set that can provide a torque multiplication or a gear reduction. And for me, that is a 2.6 to one, roughly. Now, after that, it splits off and goes to the two axles. And in the middle of the axles are the nice pumpkins, also known as differentials. And they each have a 3.73 to one gear reduction. Now, after we multiply all those different gear reductions, the 2.01 in the torque converter and the 3.09 for first gear, and the roughly 2.6 for the transfer case low range and the 3.73 for the differentials, Multiply, 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 and we get my crawl ratio, which is roughly 60 to one. That means that the maximum possible forward motion gear reduction my truck can supply is a 60 to one. So the original torque input coming from the engine gets multiplied by 60 before it gets to the wheels where it is counted as wheel torque. For off-roading and rock crawling, a diesel rig can probably get away with a crawl ratio as low as 60 to one, or maybe even a little bit lower because diesels have a lot better torque. For a gasoline vehicle or with a vehicle that has a smaller engine, you'll want a higher crawl ratio, but there does come a point where it's too high, like with triple transfer cases where you have like 500 to one gear reduction and your brakes can't even stop the vehicle because idling, it just keeps pushing through your brakes. There's that whole world of extremes. But anyways, a good crawl ratio for an internal combustion engine is anywhere from 60 to 120. Now for electric rigs, it's like, totally a different world. When you first look at their crawl ratios, you're like, how do they even move down the road? They're only like 13 to one or nine to one single speed gearboxes that have no adjustability. There's no transmission that you can shift through. 
Well, I shouldn't say that because the Jeep Magneto does have a full-on drivetrain and I love it. But typically the Teslas and the Hummer EVs and the Rivians, they'll have uh, several motors and single speed gearboxes. But the way they can get away with the seemingly pathetic crawl ratios is the fact that electrics have great torque. They have max torque at zero RPM. That's because a motor and a generator are really the same thing. So let's talk for half an hour about back EMFs. Just kidding, moving on. And they really don't need the high crawl ratios that you'd find on an internal combustion rig. Thanks for watching. Redneck Physics.